On this episode of Ghost Hunters Academy, the cadets have to tackle 14 stories of terror at Buffalo's Central Terminal. This entire concourse has a lot of activity. The new girl isn't playing well with others. I had originally wanted to put a mini DV up there, but it was actually Carl that said, no, we can't do that. They're throwing him under the bus is what you're doing. But while Carl and Jane bicker, Susan grabs the evidence. Guys, I just heard a really interesting sound right now. And Ben gets derailed by a hit on the thermal. Pan over there. What was that? Oh, my God. When Ghost Hunters Academy climbs aboard, their most frightening case yet. Did you hear that? Shh, shh. Who's that? Anything in here? The world's preeminent paranormal investigators are looking for new blood. Thousands applied. Five were given the chance. Only the best will earn a coveted spot in the Ghost Hunters family. Over the next few months, Steve and Tango will train and test the recruits. Will any of them have what it takes to pass the first semester of Ghost Hunters Academy? Hey, guys. Hey. We're going to Buffalo Central Terminal. All right. That's awesome. That is Buffalo. super sweet. This place is huge, guys. Huge. It's an abandoned train station. It's a, it's a beautiful building, guys. On the outside, it's absolutely breathtaking. On the inside, it's amazing. Lots of history. Anybody have any questions? You guys are awfully quiet back there. So we're driving to the, the next location, and uh, the team's being an, incredibly quiet. I, I think they're still a little shocked, you know, that uh, Heather has been removed from the team. As far as Heather not being here, I really do miss her. And the fact that I won't be able to work with her again is a little sad. Make sure you take the size of the place into account. I'm wondering, are they down? And do they realize, oh, man, you know, it's, it's their doom. Like, this next investigation, you know, one of us is leaving. You know, it's just going to keep happening. I don't know. I don't know what to think. Now, guys, take a look. You think the, the battleship North Carolina was big? You guys better be on your game. Nice to see you again. Good to how see you, you? too. Good to see you. Hi, how are you? So we brought a group of investigators with us. Great. We have access to the entire building. Absolutely. That's what I like to hear. I love it. Guys, here, if you look behind you, this entire concourse has supposedly a lot of activity. Full-bodied apparitions walking around, mm -hmm. footsteps, voices. They've seen, you know, the interaction of, of people buying tickets. <laughs> that traveled from down there. And it was right here. It sounded like it was right there. I feel like it was right behind the door. Have you ever heard that song before? There's all sorts of unusual sounds that you hear in this building because it's so big. Mm -hmm. So that particular one, no, I have not heard before. Guys, if you just want to walk back that way, thank you for having us. You're welcome. This is the trolley lobby, mm -hmm. and there has been, uh, you know, a, a pretty high degree of activity reported. Sounds and voices, mm -hmm. footsteps, the movement of mass-like shapes, things like that. All right, guys, as you can see, there is a water fountain here. They claim that they're seeing people come up to this water fountain, leaning down to take a, a drink. And, and they've seen that a few times reported by a few different people. But it's not the only thing that's happening up here. You it's know. a pathway. You know, someone's walking here, going to the water fountains. What was that? Do you hear that? Yeah. Boom, footstep, footstep. Whoa, whoa. What? It's not like someone's walking right with us in that other room. All right, guys. We're going to head out, OK? We're going to go that way. All right, guys, this is the apartment where the gentleman who owned this place and, and really, you know, became emotionally attached here, and uh, he actually lived here for quite some time, even after the terminal had to close its doors. Do you know what his name was? Tony Fideli. And, mm -hmm. and that may help you. Yeah, it's good to have. Mm -hmm. that, for possible, good. like, ADP Just, sessions and yeah. things like that. And we're high up, guys. Yeah. So this is straight down into the concourse. The concourse. Over yes, there. correct. Yep. And I believe they've actually seen somebody looking out from the concourse. They do claim to see things in here. And uh, I do believe we heard some sliding noises when we were in here. Mm -hmm. Like We were still, too. Yeah, when well, we kept hearing noises like voices and uh, things were sliding around. What was that? What the hell was that? What is it? I definitely heard voices coming from up there and then nothing. Guys, this is baggage claim. A lot of things are happening uh, in this area back here. There's been reports of people hearing 
uh, a female voice come from that elevator shaft over there. Okay? Also, they do claim that there's been reports of a woman that's waiting for a soldier. I remember that. Yes. You guys have a good idea for a command center? Yeah? Uh, we do. Yeah? I want to see you guys go out there and just start setting up. You guys know what to do. You know, just do it. I'm really hoping uh, that I see a good setup, you know? I mean, uh, the past investigations tell me that I'm not going to. Do you want it up against that wall? Oh, no, I don't want to get it too close to there because that can contaminate. What about, look, there's a whole solid wall right there. And there's more power outlets over there. Yeah. Setup's going good. It's going better than it was last time. This time, people are listening, especially me. So watch out when you're, you're pulling up the slack over there. Okay, thank you. I like this team today. Ben, we got a problem. We have two pronger here. Well, I have one of these. They're saving my life at this point, brother. When it comes to the setup, I helped a lot of people out. Yeah, so you gotta make sure that it's on there securely. Got it. Okay, that's power. And that shows me that I'm not just the, the guy that sits at Command Central and tells everyone what to do. All right, we're gonna go down and then we're gonna go very slightly to the left. I like that. All right. Guys? Hey. Hey. Hi. Ah, this, very nice to see. Camera's set up, set up in, in a timely manner, right? Yeah. Everything's taped down, which is nice. Everything, oh, everything's definitely taped. <laughs> to be honest, this is the first time you guys have ever set up by yourselves. I feel very proud for my team right now. I really do. Good. Guys, just quickly let us know, you know, what you have here and exactly your camera angles, why you chose that spot. You know, Jane? That That's the trolley lobby right there. Okay. So this is the, the room where there's voices heard back there and you also heard footsteps in water. Camera two is baggage. Uh, camera three here is uh, Tony's apartment. Mm -hmm. um, camera four is the water fountain area and uh, Camera five here is the concourse, which has a lot of supposed activity, full body apparition, voices. And then we did put one mini DV up on the mezzanine. Okay. That's good. Uh, I'm glad to see that you utilized the mini DV. Well, I had, I had originally wanted to put a mini DV up there, but it was actually Carl that said, no, we can't do that, so. Are you throwing him under the bus is what you're doing. Who knows? Who knows? I'd rather take my own life than throw Tang under the bus, to be honest with you. Vice versa. Yeah? Yeah. So. Jane, you know, maybe a little bit of a troublemaker. And, and you know, that's not something we want. We don't want people that are looking for drama. We don't want, we don't want people that are going to start fights or, or try to continue on with a grievance. I just want to be heard. Okay. So, guys, her voice should still be heard, right? I've been having a problem with Carl because I just felt that I was giving some really good advice as to where to put the camera. And I just felt like I wasn't being heard. So, I don't know, maybe he's threatened by me. I was very used to working with all the other members of the team and, and get friendly with them. And then Jane comes in and she has a lot to prove. She has a lot to learn. She's coming in, you know, defensive about some things, open to others. I didn't want to hear some of it in, in a couple of instances. All right, guys, let's go lights out and start investigating, okay? Okay. Okay. You guys do your thermal sweep. I'm gonna kind of go on the opposite end uh, and just do start uh, EMF. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Have a good time, guys. Let's check in this room real fast. Yeah. What's in here? The thermal imaging camera is a camera that has the ability to read hot and cold signatures. They're able to see a thermal spectrum, you know, a lot different than the human eyes. And it probably is the most coveted piece of equipment that any paranormal research team uses. This is where people have seen full body apparitions. Wow. Whoa. Oh, what's over there? Where? Pan over there. What is that? Oh, my God. You guys do your thermal sweep. I'm going to kind of go on the opposite end uh, and just do start uh, EMF. Sounds good. Cool. Chris, Ben, and I were investigating the main concourse where there are claims of full-bodied apparitions being seen. Oh, pan over there. What was that? Oh, my God. What is that? I think we're reading heat signatures through that window. Do you see what I mean? That heat signature in there? Yep, right there. 
That's Chris. <laughs> Oops. Maybe we should move to the other side of the concourse so we can get away from him. Awesome, yeah. Yeah. And then we can kind of get a full spectrum of the room. I think that's a great idea. Let's go say hi to Tony. Now, after Jane threw Carl under the bus earlier during setup, we wanted to pair the two of them together and see how they would work together. Professionalism, you know, is something we're looking for, and uh, if they're just gonna bicker and stuff, you know, there's no place for that on our team. Here we are. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get a base reading. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and start this camera. All right, so this is Jane and Heather up in Tony's apartment. Uh, Jane and Heather? Jane and Heather. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. Heather, are you possessing my body right now? Jane and Heather. I feel like on that case there at Eastern State, when I found out that, that Jane stayed and Heather went, there was a lot of different thoughts going through my head. I think Heather was the far better investigator. I, I really respected her a lot, and I would have rather seen Jane go. All right, this is Jane Start over. Carl. We're up in Tony's apartment. Tony Fideli. Tony Fideli. All right, so I'm going to do the EMF sweep here again. Okay, so, well, basically, I'm just getting point two. Point one. Oh wait. Mm. Make sure you move it slow too, because move that thing really quickly from left to right right now. Like I know. jerk it across, like it spikes up to like friggin' two. I know. I mean, I I know how to use an EMF, Carl. That's the same thing we're saying. Yeah. She tried to pretend that she knew the thermal. So yeah. if she knew how to use it, why would she be whipping it around? I'm just saying. Well, then yeah, I just discovered that should, like, some serious spikes on that thing. Treat me like a team member and like not underestimate my abilities. I mean, I really didn't appreciate it when you snapped at me like that. I just thought it was disrespectful. And you know, I am part of the team and I, I don't think that was cool. I just wanted to say that when I point out stupid stuff to you too, that you might feel like is condescending, it's because I don't know where your level is. I'm not trying to condescend to you. I'm just trying to make sure that you have all your bases covered. So as far as the EMF thing, I was just making sure you had your bases covered. I, I really do appreciate your help and everything. Like, it's awesome. But on the other hand, I do feel I have some good ideas and good insight. And that's all I'm saying, I'm, you know. It's something we have to work on a lot as a team and individually, listening to everyone, respecting everyone. Because You I'll, especially. Right. As the new, the new recruit. I want to be a part of it all, so. I respect that, and I'll, I'll try to listen more in the future. Do you want to get down to business? Sure. I mean, I'll go over here. So is there anybody with us tonight? Tony Fideli, are you still here? Give us a sign of your presence. Did you love this place because of the trains, and the traveling, and the people? Is there anybody else up here other than you or in this whole building? Carl, if you could say that a little clear, because sometimes you mumble. She's looking for a fight. She's from Jersey. Just saying. I'm just gonna go around, see if we can get some, some hits. Chiquita, there's something moving over there. I was doing an EMF sweep of the main concourse, and I thought I had heard this noise. There it is again. Heard some footsteps. I don't even know where they were coming from. This place is so big. It's getting deep, man. Toilets. Anything in here? It's getting deep, man. Who's that? Anything in here? I was doing an EMF sweep, and out of nowhere, I just hear this huge crash. And uh, I, I looked around immediately. What was that? I finally went to the opposite wall, and a, a huge slate of like marble-like material just fell under the ground and cracked. I bet this fell. Yep, that's what it was. 
they've already told us that things echo and stuff. I'm just, I, it wasn't anything paranormal, but it scared, it scared the daylights out of me. Let me keep my ears peeled. Hey guys, I actually heard some foot shuffling noises back here over the back back room, heading into this room right here, this main big room. If you want to take over the thermal, like I'm actually really curious of doing an EVP session by myself. Okay. You could take that one if you want. Okay. Chris had mentioned that he heard some footsteps in the women's room, and I thought I would go back there and do some audio work by myself, just in case I could have possibly stir up some activity being a female in the women's room. It was a good opportunity for me to see if I could capture possible EVPs or something. This is Susan. I am in the women's bathroom section. I'm here alone. We have to address something right now, I just thought of. What? We, we, we hammered into them mm -hmm. how dangerous this place was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a hundred and five pound girl running right. around this place by herself. Yeah. I think we have to address it. We should address it. Steve and I were watching Ben, Chris, and Susan, and uh, they just let Susan go off on her own. Now, it's one thing if she was being monitored on camera, but she wasn't. What if something happened to her? You know, it could be as simple as them falling in a hole or even as unusual as getting attacked by an enemy. You know, not only is it a breach of protocol, but then this is now a safety issue, and that's not good. Susan. Hey, guys. I have a feeling that you're taking advantage of the situation right here just because you want to investigate alone. Um, actually, I came back here because Chris told me there was a sound, and I thought we'd switch up partners. But right. Now, nothing wrong with it. Five, ten minutes, staying in eye shot. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. You're, you're going towards the sound, which is exactly what you're supposed to do. But as a team member, mm -hmm. you, you don't let anybody wander around alone for an hour, you know, at a time. I understand it totally. Like, my safety went out the window when I did that. Good. Go. Okay. Excellent. I was actually going to meet up with my team right now, right. so... Can we join them? All right. Go find them an hour later. <laughs> I understood exactly where they were coming from, but I was so into investigating at the time that I completely forgot about my own safety. The last thing I want to do is interrupt an investigation that's going very well um, because I'm not obeying protocol. I wonder if we can make the flashlight so we can see if they, like, can turn it on or off. Yeah, it could be interesting, yeah. Go ahead and put that there. Finally, an idea that you're, like, agreeing to. <laughs> At one point during the investigation, Jane and I, we, we kind of had a little bit of conflict. It was the first time working together. We were learning each other's styles. Is there any way we could stand them both up? And we could see if they might knock them over, turn them on or off. There you go. All right. I broke the ice to Carl, and I think, you know, we're, we're on the same page, and there's not as much tension, which, you know, will allow us to investigate more efficiently. So in the center here are two lights. You could turn them off. You can flicker the lights. You can try both of them. One might be easier than another. On the count of three, do something with those flashlights over there. One, two, three. We're here, you know? We want to talk to you. Can you shoot the camera over there, right oh, in the center? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that where it's at? Yeah. Did you see anything? I thought. In the center, right? Did you yeah, see I mean, I put my camera right on it after I saw it before you spoke. It almost looked like a... Like a dark thing, right? I actually saw a light thing, so... But I, I didn't trust it. That was my hand. Right. I thought it was a trick of my eye. I wasn't even going to bring it up uh, until I think Jane said something about it. And that, that's when I started getting interesting, because I just kind of looked, I looked back, and I thought my eyes was just making up something, kind of a white shape. But then she thought she saw something, too. There's somebody over here with us? Is there anybody in here with us? I did have the mini DV point in that direction, as I remember, so hopefully we'll have something show up in the evidence. Here we are. Man. I want to start off by uh, doing an EMF sweep, because I got a couple of creepy feelings up here, so. Sounds okay. good. I'll start in this room. What do you think? You want to just do a whole sweep of yeah, the let's floor? Yeah, a sweep of the floor. Right? Hey, uh, Susan, you take my walkie. But keep in visual contact. Yeah. We don't want to lose to seeing you. Yeah, we've already 
We've already been talked to about that, so. Alrighty. Just be careful. If you need us, give us a holler. I was doing an EMF sweep at the water fountain where there was reported sightings of phantom water fountains and a full-bodied apparition drinking from it. Point two. Point one. EMF stands for electromagnetic field, and researchers do believe that spirits can interact with this magnetic field, and we have devices that can pick up on those fluctuations and help us detect the possible presence of paranormal activity. I'm not really picking up anything more than like a point one, point two. How's the thermal reading go? Nothing yet. Nothing so far. Coming up on the hole where they supposedly saw the water cooler. This is where it was, right there. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Look at it. Looks like it goes down like two floors at hold. Oh, let's keep so far. Let's keep doing a sweep. You go in this one. Let's check over in these rooms. Yeah. Let's go in there. Yeah, we're still not getting anything on the thermal. We're gonna be in this room, just to let you know, Susan. I just heard a really interesting sound right now. It was a sound of trickling water. And I kid you not, that was the most weirdest thing. So I did a sweep of this room, guys. Okay. I was doing an EMF sweep at the water fountain room. Nothing out of... Um, guys, I just heard a really interesting sound right now. It was a sound of trickling water. And I kid you not, that was the most weirdest thing. When I first heard that sound, I kind of overlooked it for about five seconds until, like, it hit me randomly, and I was like, wow, that's right. There were apparitions of a woman drinking at a water fountain, a phantom water fountain at that and it kind of took me aback. And, uh, I wonder if there's any water pipes around here or anything that... Well, let's, Hold let's on. just listen. Everyone, let's just be quiet. Let's be quiet. Here. Yeah, I hear nothing. Uh, now, did you hear what I just did? I kind of bumped up against it. No, it, it was like, I don't know how to explain it. When you turn on a water faucet, but very lightly. You know, I'd actually like to try a little experiment. Pick up a piece of debris, and I'm gonna just drop it down there to see what sort of a sound we get. Ready? Yep. See, that doesn't sound like a drip. Uh, that's not what I heard. Okay, I'm gonna try dropping it down the metal the pipe. Thing. Yeah. That would have been way loud. Been way <laughs> yes. yeah. We tried throwing stones down the chute. We we tried banging on things and rustling things just to see if we could recreate that sound again. Unfortunately, e everything we tried uh, couldn't recreate that sound. Do you have another audio recorder on you? Yeah. Can I leave one here? Sure. Just for a little bit, see if we could possibly capture that sound again. That's me setting down the recorder. I'm gonna get out of here. This place is totally dusty. We should start an EVP session when yep. we're done. Okay. So out of all these trainees, is there any one of them that you can think of that would make a good team member yet? I see energy in Chris. Yeah. But that's all, just energy. Out of all of them, I, I mean, and Carl. Carl. Carl's good, I too. Could. I agree with you. I'm not sold on Jane yet at all. No, me neither. I mean, when they had that little confrontation, that behavior scares me a little bit, you know? Yeah. This is Ben and Chris in the concourse and kind of do a thermal scan. Whoa, everything just went red. That's really strange. It's because I think you're pointing it out the window where it's the coldest. Let's go back here. Did you hear that? It sounded like it came from this room right over here. Is there anyone in here? Would you like to make yourself known? I could have swore I just got a dot of red from over here. Like red, like heat. I'm gonna go over here real quick. See, 
There's a... Right there. What is that? Oh. It was like right in there. No, we gotta lift it up. Yeah, I can. There it is right there. See what it looks like? Is that thermal hit that we got? It looks like it's the, the, the edge of this doorway right here. See it right there? That's exactly where that door frame yeah, is. Yeah, you're right. There it is. Nothing paranormal about that. All right, where to? Anywhere, really. You want to kind of go this way? I don't want to get too far from the apartment, but we haven't really checked it out down here. Sure. Maybe kind of poke our heads anyway. Oh, they scared me. What was that? You hear kind of almost a thumping over there? Tony, was that you? Can you make that noise again? Tony, do you mind the fact that we're here? Did you hear that? Back there, right? Yeah, it's kind of a really distant. Tony, are you down there? Jane and I were searching around in Tony Fidelli's apartment. We thought we started to hear some sounds. So we went into the room, just kind of keeping our ears open. I'm gonna ask who's ever here, please give us a sign. Can you make a knocking noise like this? And if you don't give us any sign that you're here, we're gonna go away thinking... Is that you shining your light in there? No, I was... I don't know what that is. What's over here? And if you don't give us any sign that you're here, we're gonna go away thinking... Is that you shining your light in there? Right? No, I was, I don't know what that is. Flashlight? Is there anybody else up here? In the bathroom, maybe? Anybody in there? There's no one in here. Jane and I both split. We were trying to cover this whole apartment area as best we could to see if there was anyone up here. It's a lot of ground and space to cover. So finally we decided that there was nobody up here. Would you radio Steve and Tango? Um, Jane to Steve and Tango. Go for Steven Tango. Uh, where are you guys located? We're at uh, Command Center next to uh, the uh, the water. Command Center what? The water? Everything okay? You can let them know. We saw a flashlight. Um, we're just trying to figure out where this light source came from um, by the window. We were trying to find out everybody's location to roll out somebody on this floor with us. Copy that. Let us know if you see it again. We'll try to help you out. Okay, thanks. You thought it was outside. It could have been a car passing by. It could have been, like, somebody right out here, because if you come over here... Okay, ready? Blast him. Blast him. There it is again. Wait, stop, stop. That's what it was. Did you see that just now? Yeah. That was from outside. Somebody outside the flashlight? I mean, I, I don't know from outside, I definitely don't think it's supernatural. Yeah, no, definitely. It's definitely somebody from outside. Yeah. It's weird, though, because it's like, it's as if someone's actually flashing a light right at this window where we're at, right? Could be. Maybe it's one of Steven Tango's tests. Yeah, but I think that's... Steven Tango are at command. They say they're at command. I'll go downstairs and check it out. Go, 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 go. We gotta get the center command, come on. Give me a go when you're doing it, okay? Jane suggested that maybe we go outside and test it. Test it with my flashlight. Yeah, it came in a little bit on the uh, ceiling here. Not as bright as I saw it, but if somebody else had a brighter flashlight. Or, you know, if it was the headlights of a car or a truck, it would certainly do it. Okay, copy that. Okay, thanks, Paul. Good work. t bone Let's do this one. Chris and I thought that we'd investigate in one of these rooms that, for the most part, is untouched. 
there anyone in here that wants to communicate with us tonight? We understand this place is haunted. I've been here for a long time tonight. I haven't seen any evidence of a haunting. Dude, you know what I'm thinking? What's that? You wanna try a little provoking, maybe? We could, we could. Provoking is usually the last measure uh, taken when uh, you're at a supposed haunted place, and you pretty much uh, try to antagonize the spirit or ghost to come out and manifest. Hey, look at this place. It is trash. Do you see this? Do you like seeing it this trashed? Does it piss you off that people have been spray painting on the walls? Does that upset you? There's a ton of paper right here in front of us. Grab one of these pieces of papers, move it, throw it, blow it. Shouldn't be too hard. Just let us know you're here. Something just creaked behind me. That was weak sauce. That wasn't even definitive. I need something definitive. Steve to Chris. Carl. Please report to center command, please. All teammates, please report to center command. Copy that. All right, well, we're gonna get this place broken down, right? Time to wrap up. Let's wrap up quick, efficiently, and let's start by getting all the lights up, okay? feeling more confident with every investigation. I'm learning techniques and how to use equipment, and I think Steve and Tango are recognizing that. Excellent job, Carl, handling that conversation with Jane. Oh, yeah? Thanks. If I had to make the decision at this point who was going home, I would probably pick Jane. Um, it, it might be a lack of experience, but I feel like she's, she's brought kind of an attitude with her. You have to coil these wires and put them in because they're all over the place. And I've noticed someone's doing it. I, I don't know who, I'm just saying. I was a little worried about Chris there, but at the same time, he was really thinking outside the box later, and they liked that. <laughs> I think Susan's been getting better and better, so I'm not sure they're ready to let her go. And Ben, of course, I'm really impressed with him. I feel like I'm pretty safe, but I need to do even better. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? Everything's packed up, nice quick breakdown. So how do you guys feel about tonight? I feel like we actually hit this place. Yeah. It's actually nice to have a lot more time to investigate. Yeah. 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 I think we've seen more good tonight than bad. This, yeah, this investigation for the first time, we saw a lot more positives than right. we did negatives. I think we saw actual teamwork. Yeah. You know? As much as you guys patted each other on the back, you're also really quick to say, she said this, he said that. Jane and, and Carl, uh, you guys sort of had a, an exchange of words, you know, and um, Carl, you know, apologized. And it should have ended there. That's right. Yeah. You know, and, and, but you prolonged it. You yeah. Know, and that's not good. When you put that aside and you went to investigation, you were in the investigation yeah. 100%. You guys changed. Right. So. Yeah. Doing. You guys feel that there is closure? You, yeah. Do you feel it? Yeah. All right. Good. Good. Excellent. Carl, you know, we, we tested you and Jane today, you know, with, with a light test. I thought you might have. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you guys followed the protocol and the procedure to a T. Yeah. Both of you. I also like that you guys didn't just think it was a ghost. You know, like a lot of people will. I'm really glad that I passed the test. I think that if I had gone running the other way or been like, no, that was a ghost, I think I'd probably be going home at the end of this investigation. This was a good investigation. I'm very happy. Very happy. Are all of us going to be going on to the next investigation? I don't know. But guys, don't lose your momentum. Analysis, let's kill it. Let's get all the equipment back in the RV. Let's go. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Hey guys, hey, how's it going? going? Good. Yeah, you guys ready to analyze everything? And definitely. You feel all right? I definitely yeah. feel good. Good. Yeah? You know, analyze everything very thoroughly, as you know, second for second. Of course, no scanning, fast forwarding, none of that stuff. Pause every time you look away. And please, I gotta remind you one last time to stay focused. You have to remain in that moment, watching that screen. You guys had a great investigation, so don't, you know, lose momentum. All right, guys? Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, good luck. All right. Thanks. All right. I'm really looking forward for one specific evidence just to see if I could capture that sound that I heard by the water fountain. Uh, 
Unfortunately, nothing came up on the track, uh, which was a little disappointing. At one point during the investigation, Jane and I sort of both noticed something at the same time. Definitely wanted to focus on it during the analysis and try to find. We had two different cameras on the same point, so hopefully there was something there. Hey, Carl. Jane, this is when uh, you and Carl are down in the trolley lobby, uh -huh. and looks like you guys... Yeah, we both saw that thing. And oh, this okay. is when he pans up. What happens, I, I turn the camera, the IR. I didn't see anything on the mini DVD. Yeah, because you just turned it now. Yeah. I didn't see anything there. Right. Mm. I don't see anything. Turns out there's nothing, which, which leaves me scratching my head. If Jane and I both saw something, but it didn't show up on any cameras, you know, what was going on there? It's weird if our eyes were both playing tricks at the playing same time. Playing tricks, but right. That's a, little co that's a little too coincidental. That's, that's kinda, so weird. It's it is weird. weird. It's a little weird. At the end of this investigation, I would be devastated if I was sent home. I would be, uh, um, I would be really upset. <laughs>